with those clouds a little bit dreary yesterday morning, but then we saw that sunshine come through. We're going to see sun all day today. It is going to be warmer, so if you're missing that fall weather, I'm sorry to tell you it's not going to feel like fall today. We're looking at 59 in Jacksonville, 63 currently in Little Rock, 57 in Harrison. A lot more 60s now starting to warm up with that sunshine out there. We're tracking the latest with Epsilon. Max sustained winds here, 85 miles per hour. That is a Cat 1 hurricane. Now, it is likely to to continue to track farther north, uh, probably steering clear of Bermuda now to the east of that and then heading farther north and east away from the United States and away from Canada. So that's good news for us here. Other good news is we do have beautiful weather for you, mostly sunny by lunchtime, closer to 81 degrees, ultimately warming up into those mid 80s today and then staying in the 80s for supper time and basically a copy and paste forecast for Thursday. I might as well just go home tomorrow. You won't need me because it's the same 84 for tomorrow, mostly sunny. More clouds, though, and some rain returning Friday. Pat? All right, thanks, Carmen. Let's check that traffic brought to you by the Crane team. Starting here, uh, looking at an accident down in Bryant along I-30. Uh, looking good at the county line, but down here at Reynolds Road, just east of that, that accident causing a backup. The right lane, again, the right lane near Reynolds Road, 30 eastbound, and Bryant is backed up. Now, looking at uh, I-30 here, a little farther up the road at Alexander Road, looking okay. That's good to know that the only the accident down there in Bryant is the only one that we have here in town at this time. That's your traffic report. Now let's get to the news. Thanks, Pat. The Trump and Biden campaigns are focused on two critical swing states with the election less than two weeks away. As Fox News correspondent Doug Luzader tells us from Washington this morning, there are more signs that in the final stretch, the race for the White House is tightening. Pennsylvania and North Carolina getting a lot of attention today from both campaigns and President Trump is trying to make the most of those new allegations against Joe Biden's son. Where's Hunter? Remember we said that? Where's Hunter? That we made the t-shirt. It was the number one selling t-shirt. Well, t-shirts aside, President Trump is trying to connect the dots between former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter's business dealings in both Ukraine and China, all highlighted in a controversial New York Post story last week. And the president was making that case in Pennsylvania, a state he narrowly won four years ago. Biden's consistent lead there in the polls has been shrinking, and that's where former President Obama comes in. The single most important thing we can do is make sure that we've got a Democratic president, Democratic vice president, and a Democratic Congress. Obama has made just limited appearances on behalf of his former vice president, but he will be at a rally today in Philadelphia to help shore up that state. Biden himself remains off the campaign trail, and while he is believed to be preparing for Thursday's debate, the extended absence is unusual with the election so close. And that means his running mate is getting quite a workout. I actually um, started the day being in Milwaukee virtually. I did a number of radio interviews. And today, Kamala Harris will make her case in person in North Carolina, and she will just about cross paths with President Trump there. And right now, most polls in North Carolina show that race is right within the margin of error. In Washington, Doug Luzader for Fox 16 News. Mandy, back to you. Thanks, Doug. For the second day, long lines and waits were the trend at many early voting locations. According to the Secretary of State, more than 67,000 people in Arkansas cast their votes just on Monday. That includes more than 9,200 in Pulaski County alone. As of now, 25 counties still haven't reported numbers, so that number will even grow to be more. Early voting continues in Arkansas until, of course, November 2nd, the day before the election. One of the things you'll be voting on is issue one. It looks to make a half cent sales tax to fund road improvements permanent. Right now it expires in June of 2023. The tax will not change what it funds. That's maintenance, repair and improvements to the state's highways. 30% of the tax revenue is also given to cities and counties for their local projects and maintenance. But those against, against issue one say the tax should not be in Arkansas's constitution and RDOT should spend funds more efficiently. Those in favor, though, think it'll provide a permanent revenue stream for road improvements. This gives us an opportunity to create something that's going to be a little bit more consistent for us that we can budget and plan for ongoing down the road. They're selling you that they're going to fix all of your highways and all of your roads with this, but it's going to be a long time before anybody even sees it. The Department of Finance and Administration estimates the tax would generate nearly $294 million in revenue every year. With early voting now in full swing, some polling locations are seeing thousands of voters a day. 
But with automated polls in use, errors are bound to happen. One Pope County voter ran into trouble when her ballot machine selected the wrong choice for president. Donna Ogle says she and her husband were using an automated voting machine when the screen froze and selected the wrong presidential candidate instead of the next page button that she hit. Polling officials moved her to a new machine and took that one out of commission. They can call us and we can remove it and take care of it. When it prints out your ballot, make sure that it says the name of the person that you actually voted for. Harris says out of the more than 1,800 voters that turned out Tuesday, only two had issues voting by machine. An issue at the ballot box in Mississippi County means some voters will have to recast their ballots. The county election coordinator says a software issue led to voters casting ballots for the wrong races Monday. The issue's been resolved. Representative Monty Hodges says that voters should always alert poll workers when there is an issue with their ballot. Stay on top of uh, uh, this election. Know that if, if, if your candidate that you that you that you know that should be on the on the ballot is not on there before you uh, submit that ballot be sure to question the the uh, the uh, those that are working in the the polls to ensure that you your vote is counted voters who were affected by the issue would now have to cast a paper ballot for the affected races if you are at the polls and notice anything wrong for example if you're being told you can't vote or if you're not registered when you should be let us know about it. Send us an email to investigations at fox16.com. This is for voters or poll workers alike. You can always remain anonymous too. North Little Rock police need help searching for a missing juvenile. Dennis Thompson is just 13. He's about 5'9", weighing about 120 pounds. He has black hair with brown eyes. If you've seen him or know where he might be, you're asked to call the North Little Rock police. A Houston police officer died Tuesday after he was shot at an apartment complex. The officer is Sergeant Harold Preston. He's a 41 year veteran of the department and he was preparing to retire this year. Police say he was responding to some type of domestic incident when he was shot more than once in the head. The suspect then surrendered to police. A grand juror in the Breonna Taylor case says they were not given the option to indict any officers on charges for her death. A judge granted the grand juror's request to unseal evidence in Kentucky's case against former Louisville police officer Brett Hankison. He was only charged for shooting into neighboring apartments, not for shooting Taylor. The grand juror says they never agreed that any of the officer's actions were justified or that the wanton endangerment charges should be the only charges. Still ahead, a Phoenix man found a unique way to remember all the presidential candidates who didn't win their elections. Plus, seven people in the right place at the right time.